All right, guys, this is a lesson on getting good, clean recording on any budget. So good video, regardless whether you have just a phone or you have a DSLR and you have some um, more high budget lenses. Um, so what I did is I brought uh, an expert on this topic in. This is Brian Fitzgerald. Uh, you can check him out on YouTube. He's got around like 12,000 subscribers. Yeah. He's been making video for over a decade so um, I brought Brian in on this because he can speak to the tech stuff. And uh, also, we want to do this efficiently, um, just like everything else we're doing. We want to get bang for our buck. So we're not going to get caught up in the weeds talking about um, audio interfaces and things like that. This is about aesthetic, okay? So again, showing you how to get good, clean, professional-looking video on any budget. So uh, we've laid out the tools that we used for this demonstration, and we did three different versions of a performance. So in one version, you'll see how we used a smartphone. Um, and in the next two versions, versions two and three, we used a digital camera, a DSLR. What we did was we contrasted different lenses. So in one version, we just used the basic stock lens that comes with pretty much every Canon DSLR. This is the 1855 millimeter. Um, but what we wanted to do for the final take was we wanted to create uh, a depth of field while we were performing so that we were in focus and our background was blurred. So um, we used this lens. Uh, Brian, what is this lens all about? This is Canon's, one of Canon's 50 millimeter lenses. This goes down to an aperture value of 1.8. That's your f stop. Those values are always going to be listed. Pretty much right here along the uh, barrel of the lens. The lower this number is, the more capable the lens is at sucking in light, at truly perceiving light. So if you have a darker room, but you have a lens that is capable of going to an aperture that low or even lower, it's going to produce an image that has less grain, less noise, and more brightness inherent. When you have a low aperture like this, you're able to control how tight the focal depth is. So how much your subject is in focus versus everything else around them. The lower this number goes, the tighter that focus is. And the less focused everything else is, the greater the defocus effect is. And what we'll do is we'll walk through this step by step. Uh, in another section, Brian's gonna demonstrate this. Uh, he'll use me as a test subject and he'll walk through the setting. So don't get hung up on the terms right now. Uh, we'll get to that in another section. But these are the tools that we used uh, to video these performances. For audio in this video, we used a single microphone. This is Slate's VMS condenser microphone. This is going into Pro Tools and being tracked there. And later, the audio is brought in in post alongside the video footage, and we synchronize it. There are a number of ways to synchronize the audio to your video. You can eye it up, or you can use software like Plural Eyes. All right, so for basic budget audio, um, I want to talk about stuff that we all have. We all have a mixer. Um, so what you can do is you can take the audio from your mixer and go out into something called the iRig Pro. Uh, the reason why I love this thing, it's, it's really versatile and it's cheap, um, maybe about 150 bucks, but um, you can plug this directly into a smartphone. So if you're using your phone to capture the video, um, you can run a mono signal XLR or quarter inch out of your mixer into the iRig, and then you can record it directly to your phone so you don't have to sync up the audio. It's all done at the same time, so you can capture your video and your audio. Um, another option is there is a USB out so that you could... Um, plug it into your computer and record on your computer with whatever uh, DAW that you're using and uh, synchronize the two later. So this is a, a great budget option for getting capturing good clean audio. Can still shut down a party. I can hang with anybody. I 
I can drink whiskey and red wine, champagne all night. Little scotch on the rocks and I'm fine, I'm fine. But when I taste tequila, maybe I still see cutting up the floor on a sorority t-shirt. Same one you wore when we were sky high in Colorado. Lips pressed against the bottle Swearing on the Bible, baby, I never leave you I remember how bad I need you When I taste tequila When I taste tequila I can kiss somebody So we've got a handful of different variables to think about with the DSLR. The most important stuff to think about in this setting with video is going to be our ISO, which is a representation of film speed, digital representation of that. The faster the film speed is, the higher the number, the better the performance is under low light. So if you have a low light situation, what you can do to compensate for that is to turn the ISO up. So right now we're shooting at ISO 800 which is still relatively low. The higher you go with ISO, the more noise you will introduce. We're at 1600 here, up to 3200, 6400. Uh, there are bodies that will accommodate way higher ISOs, but you are obviously gonna be doing that at detriment to quality. The shutter is not doing anything other than just staying open right now. We're at one 125th of a second here. If I manipulate that and go to a faster shutter speed, you're gonna see immediately different things happening with the footage. You can actually see some weird ghosting happening in the background and that is because of the speed at which the LED lighting in the background is operating. So sometimes that's something you have to catch early on or it will plague all of your footage. If I go back to uh, 1 125th of a second, that alleviates it. If I continue to go up, obviously the slower the shutter speed, the longer it's going to be open in theory here and the more light it's going to be letting in for that amount of time. So you have to constantly strike a balance between ISO, your film speed, and your shutter speed. There's another component here. Everything deals with light when you're dealing with photo. We're currently shooting at an aperture of f1.8. Every lens is going to have different peak performance. The lowest it can go, the lower that number is, that f-stop, the more light it is going to be able to bring in. So a cheaper lens, you're going to have a higher minimum f-stop. So a kit lens is going to be uh, at, at its wide open setting about 4.0 for an f. Uh, it might be at f uh, 5.6 or even higher. It's all going to depend on the focal length of the lens. We're currently shooting with a 50 millimeter lens that goes down to 1.8. If I raise the aperture up, you're going to get lower performance in dark settings. You are also at the exact same time as a side effect or a benefit or a detractor, however you want to look at it, um, we're going to get a, a wider depth of field. So the wider that I go here, it's going to become more and more dark. I'm up to f4.0 right now. If I increase the aperture and I get to, say, f5.6, we now have a much darker image. We're still at 1 125th of a second with an ISO of 800. I can compensate by raising my ISO up to 3200. We get a little bit closer to the image that we started with, but we've introduced a ton more noise. We have a lot more stuff in focus than we did before. The stuff in the background is still out of focus, but if I continue to raise the aperture up to, say, f22, where we're going to lose every bit of low light performance we have, um, you're going to basically be dealing with point and shoot film camera territory where everything's in focus. I think all of us equate quality with tight focal depth, and that's because we don't see the world with everything around us in focus all the time. Everything is in varying degrees of focus, so if you can emulate that with your camera settings, you're going to achieve an image that is way more, quote, real. The most important thing when you're thinking about creating video or stills that have that quality that you're after, that really pops, that has that production grade that's just up a few steps 
or several steps up from just shooting with a phone and something you can accomplish with a phone even is lighting. Anything with an image is totally revolving around lighting. All the variables that are in camera like your shutter speed, your film speed, the ISO, or your aperture, the f-stop, all of those are dependent upon the amount of light that you have available and what you can do with light to create an image and compose an image. So aside from all the stuff with rule of thirds and getting the framing the way you want, you're not going to be able to get the image quality that you want unless your lighting is there. Just the ambient lighting in the room could be enough. Daylight is perfect, but if you want to have control over the light, you need to introduce the ability to control the light with lighting boxes and diffusers. You definitely do not want to go with soft light. You want to have something that is a cool, clean light. So not the kind of incandescent soft light bulb quality, unless that's what you're after, but all of your footage is going to have that warm, yellowed light to it. Um, one of the biggest things with composing an image that's great is your ability to control it after the fact. If you don't have the light there and your image is dark, your video is dark, you're going to have to fix that in post and software. And no matter what software you use, you are going to be introducing noise. Just the same like working with audio. If you have a noisy signal and you boost that signal, now it's going to be a louder, noisy signal. <laughs> same thing with images. So you want to have it right and it goes into the camera and not fixing it after. That whole fix it in the mix thing is right. going to just shoot yourself in the foot. Right. So we're just going to show you um, some really cost effective ways to do that. We've got a um, soft box here that you can get like for about 60 bucks. Yeah. You get two of them with diffusers. Um, and bulbs. Yes, bulbs, the whole thing. So uh, it's something that anybody can afford. And uh, we're not going to get super technical. You know, we're just going to set up basics so that uh, you can get up and running, uh, get it clean, like Brian's talking about. And then that way you can manipulate it however you want, if you need to. But you should be able to just kind of record and go. Yeah. That's the point of this. So. The biggest thing is to not overthink mm -hmm. the whole process. If it looks good, it is good. If you have doubts about what you're getting as far as a product is concerned before you even officially start shooting, you should trust your gut and make some changes. So here we see Matt lit with just the light in the room. We're currently shooting with the 50 millimeter Canon lens at 1.8 for the aperture so it is wide open with an ISO of 400 and a shutter speed simulated at 1 125th of a second. We have lighting in the form of an overhead light that is just a bit offset to his right, our left. So the right side of his face is being lit, while the left side of his face is not so much. It's a bit more in the dark. We've also got a bit of a shadow over his shoulder there. Now, if we kick on a single softbox, we'll get this effect. We now have much more focused light on Matt's right side, while the left side is still a bit in the dark. So we have a bit of contrast there with much more definition than we did before. Now we have soft boxes on on both the left and right of Matt. They're off by about seven feet on either side flanking him. We have much more uniform lighting across his face, across his body, and that causes a lot more definition and makes him pop in the image. We're still shooting at the same camera settings, but we've added a ton more definition to the image, and that means lots more control. We can take this image and really, really play up the contrast in post. When I taste tequila